What's up, guys? It's your boy, the hoodlum, Eric Ecton, and you're tuning in to the Three Count Podcast. Enjoy. Welcome, everybody, to another great edition of the Three Count Podcast presents Now Entering the Ring. I'm your host, Clifford Red Dog Miller, and, uh, you know, like, like we've said, uh, it's Corona time. And you can't do hot dogs and handshakes because you ran the hot dogs and you can't give handshakes. And so when your team wears the free 99, they don't come to work. So it's just me because, you know, I'm that cool. It's what I do. But this is now entering the ring, which means one thing. We have a special guest for you. Now, he has been on the show before. We have asked him a lot of questions, but he never had his official episode. So we could not let that slide. So you can find this man at ACW. You can find this man at SCWA. You can find this man on EPPW. And then you can find this man on C3W. So give it up for the humble hoodlum himself, Eric Acton. Hi. <laughs> okay <laughs> okay how's it going man <laughs> oh man i'm doing great uh it's like i was saying before uh we started recording uh just shoveling snow all day got pel- i think we got pelted worse than anybody else in maryland i think <laughs> after we finished track after we finished measuring everything i think we came out with like 12 to 13 inches of snow yeah oh, that's wild so, like, for those who don't know, like, we're recording this episode a day after we got hit with the Northeast, so where we legitimately, like, rain and snow. Well, at least on my side of Maryland, I got snow, rain, snow, and then rain and snow together, which was wild. And then you just got pelted with the- I just got all snow. <laughs> all snow. <laughs> just all snow. You drop one L, and you have Al snow. <laughs> I had so much snow. You think I was running stuff for Pablo? <laughs> He's like, hey, yo, platos of plumos. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But, man, like, thank you for just coming on the show and, like, coming to talk with us, man. Oh, absolutely. I love, I love watching this, honestly. I pretty much – I think I've seen – I want to say at least 15 episodes so far. Oh, bad. Like, I'm just trying to go back and I'm just like trying to go back from the beginning and just watch all the way through now. <laughs> Has there been any ones that stuck, stood out to you that you liked? Um, I hate to say I hate to say his name because even though we're best friends, I loved uh, Jeremy. Uh, loved. Uh, Chris Sandino is like my favorite person to watch on the indie scene right now <laughs> yeah and Dino, uh, having andino on was definitely a lot of fun and then you know studio 22 like i i love the fact that they got into a legit argument like while we were interviewing them <laughs> yeah <laughs> those guys together man those guys are so wild man well that's cool man i appreciate you like just you know going back and checking out the episodes and like listening to them oh yeah absolutely uh you got a good product there's no as long as the product's good, like I got no issue just sitting there just wasting hours and hours and hours watching something. It's been funny for me, man, because like uh like I was telling you, like, you know, like you were saying we were talking and like you like are unofficially like the hundredth episode that we've like interviewed, like recorded. So like, you know, for you, I was like, dang man, this is so cool that like you know, here you are at the centennial mark and you're the guy that's getting interviewed and we've had like so many people come on and talk to us about everything and the way that the the podcast has shifted and changed we were actually we were just talking about this on um our our new show because that by the time this comes out our new show returning to the ring we were talking about on the dry run show where um it started off as like hey what are you doing like how are you doing like what's going on with you and then it's like hey, what advice do you have to give to people like me who's just coming up in the business? And, like, it's it's been so cool to watch it change, like, this learning thing that's, like, happening now. Right, right. But that's what you're here for, to help teach. Because if there's somebody who's watched me from day one to present, getting ready to come on my year mark, which when this episode comes out, it will be past my year mark. Uh. The number one question I have to ask you, man, is... Who is the humble hoodlum? You know, 
I've been trying to fix. I've I probably spent a good. Oh man, I probably spent a good five to ten years trying to figure that out, and I figured it out probably a year ago. Like me being a humble hoodlum, I I hate saying it, but I do the wrong things, but I do them for the right reasons. I grew up I grew up a poor kid right outside of Baltimore. I um, had to do we had to do everything we had to do. Uh I remember vividly there was one point in time I saw a guy in a suit while past this homeless guy, he asked for change. I told him to piss off. I ended up pickpocketing the guy and I gave the homeless man all the money in his wallet. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of people compare me to uh, like a psychotic nut job. Some people compare me to a ghetto Robin Hood. I was e, just taking that. <laughs> e, uh, at the end of the day, I'm just Eric Ecton. I might do the wrong things, but best believe I do them for the right reasons. And that's like one thing that you and I like done, like when we've traveled the road and we've actually talked stories and stuff like that, like you've had like one of the most interesting journeys like I've ever been attached to, like everything from like the hip hop scene to, you know, like you said, coming oh, up yeah. from, from, from broke to in the wrestling scene to like, it just, it's just, like I said, you just had like one amazing journey, like all around. Yeah, no, it's wild. Uh, I went from um, practically being ho- almost being homeless when I was 19, 20 years old. Because I was young and stupid. I wanted to go live on my own. I wanted to show the world I could do, like I could do me by myself. And I went from practically being homeless, sleeping on friends' couches and everything like that, to having a real nice house out in the country. And just being able to live free and just do my thing now. And I love it. Yeah. And I was like, I remember we were, we, we talked like, I don't know, man, we spent, we spent a good amount of time, like whether, whether we're on TikTok or not, <laughs> 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 just talking about like, just talking about life, man. It was just, like I said, it was like one of the coolest journeys. And unfortunately, like if you weren't on TikTok when we were doing it, uh, you wouldn't get to hear all the cool road stories, man. Like, for me, I guess what 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 got you into the wrestling business, and what keeps you in the business, like to keep pushing. Oh man, so fun story. The reason why, the reason why, and the reason why I still am in the wrestling business is so. Am I allowed to curse on here? Yes, you are. I am so fucking petty. <laughs> So uh, we had this conversation privately before, but uh, my father uh, was a professional wrestler back in, oh man, I want to say from 93, 92, 93 to about 2010. And so I, I grew up in it, like, I mean, my dad wasn't in the WWE or anything like that, but I grew up like learning the ins and outs of it, meeting a lot of people. Uh, like one of the closest friends uh, that I made in the that I made in the business that's still active was uh, Dan Grill, Dave Heath, and him and my dad were really good friends. Uh, always uh, go out to dinner with Dave whenever he was doing a show in Maryland, and back when uh, he used to work at the House of Pain in Hagerstown. I remember going down to the school every Tuesday when uh, I would see my dad and, you know, just being like a seven, just being like a seven year old, uh, just running around, hitting the ropes, falling, pretending you're like the rock or triple H. (laughs) Uh, The reason why I still am in it is just as petty because my dad. So ultimately, I want to prove that I'm better than my dad. And I know he's going to see, I know he's probably going to see this when it comes out. And I've already had this conversation with him. So, uh, so my life outside of wrestling is uh, pretty, it's pretty weird. 
I'm having a conversation with Jeremy Grimes. And he messages me. He goes, I had no idea your dad was into PWI 500. I was like, what? And I go, all right. All right. I've, never seen, I've never known anyone to actually hit on 500. So he was probably like 500. No. This motherfucker was in the mid 300s. And I was like, nah. Nah, bro. Nah, fam. <laughs> so right now, it's my ultimate goal to get above the rank above him. And then I think once I do that, I could be like, na 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 boo boo. Nice. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, no, nah, no, nah, all kidding aside, I love my dad. Uh, he taught me, he taught me a lot in and out. And he even said his goal, his goal when he found out that I was wrestling was for me to do better and pick up where he left off to get further than what he did. I appreciate that. This man drove six. Yeah, this man drove like almost six hours to watch me wrestle for 15 minutes. Uh, I can't, I can't begin to thank him for that amount of support. He's one of, he's straight up. He's one of only like, four or five people in my family that support me doing this. No. But physically how I got into wrestling was is even more wild. So doing all this, I talked to my mom when I was like 19. I was like, hey, I want to be a pro wrestler. My mom goes, absolutely not. And she's like, while you live under my house, it's my rules. You're not wrestling. Because that's the thing that she hated about my dad. So I was like, okay, fine. Screw this. I'm moving out. Uh, Between moving out, living on my own, being dead broke, being practically homeless, I didn't have time. I couldn't dedicate anything to wrestling. So we fast forward from age 19 to, I want to say, 20. Five. By the time I'm 25, I'm working with a record label in Hagerstown, um, Humble Hood Limited Entertainment. It's the that's where I have the mon that's where I have the moniker, the character, and we're a at the time we were a hip hop rap based label in Maryland. So we've done we specialize in like the underground hip hop scene. So we've worked with like Tech Nine, uh, Cut Calhoun, uh, Caskey, work with some people from uh, Young Money, Cash Money. Uh, who, who else? Uh, Stevie Stone. And a lot of, uh, a lot of like big underground artists. And really nothing gets bigger than ICP for underground for underground hip hop. We got invited to go out to the gathering of the jugglers to perform. Out there is, you know, JCW, uh, Juggler Championship Wrestling that uh, ICP runs. Go out there. We're, I had a horrible drive going out. Everyone's packed into my car. I drove. 350 miles to Thornville, Ohio for the shit, right? And me and God bless, God rest his soul, uh, Wiley Flew. Uh, he was the man that created Humble Hoodlum. He, he was murdered back in 2017. And it, it was real rough. But uh, yeah, yeah, God rest his soul, man. We get into a fight day one. And I'm like, we're just like, fuck you, fuck you. We're shoving. We're throwing, we're throwing hands with each other at this point. I'm ready to pack all of my stuff and leave. And my label mate now, uh, Ro, he stops me. He goes, bro, just chill, relax. Let's just go have fun. They got wrestling over there. They're doing two shows. Let's go watch. Get over to the ring. Get over to the ring where they're doing the show and everything like that. And they're doing uh, like an open 
open mat, like open tryouts and seminars and stuff like that. And they opened it to everybody. Uh, standing in the middle of the ring is Madman Panda. He says, looks at me, he goes, hey, you want to be a pro wrestler? I go, uh, yeah, sure. He goes, well, sign the waiver, get in here, kid. I was like, uh, I don't got wrestling shoes on. He goes, I don't give a fuck, just get in the ring. <laughs> sign it, get it, sign it, get in the ring. And oh, I'm trying to remember the sequence of events. They ran us through like a little small bump drill. Like they taught us how to bump. And that felt like, you know how it is taking your very first bump. It's really weird. I took it. I was like, I really don't know if I like that or hated it. So then after that, uh, we're towards the end of it. I'm trying to remember everything exactly. He goes, have you ever taken a chop before, kid? And me being stupid, I said, no. <laughs> he said, oh, boy, do I got a treat for you. Pulls my New Day shirt up. Puts me in the corner. He gets ready to chop the living hell out of me. And before he makes contact, he stops. And he goes, no, I'm not going to do it. We're going to bring out the goon squad. And it's pretty much the entire JCW roster. Who leads it all? Another than Crazy Mary Dobson. <laughs> and she hauls off. And she goes. Huge red welt in my chest. I felt it. And I went. <gasps> but inside my head was. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> and then after that. The entire roster went in. And just. Berated. Like. I guess berate wouldn't be the right word. They went in and like chopped the living shit out of my chest. I still have the pictures on Facebook. If I can find them, I'll show them to you later. And so that wrapped up day one. They said uh, they really love me. They wanted me to go to the next day and everything like that. And I was like, wow, for not having any wrestling experience whatsoever, this is actually going to Uh, learning more moves and everything like that, and that was fine. And then they taught us how to do clotheslines. I clotheslined this guy, and I threw it up too high, and I hit him in the chin. I didn't know what I was doing. You go, okay, we're going to show you how to do it and take it properly. Here it comes, goddamn Willie Mack. <laughs> he, he goes, all right, you're going to take two clotheslines in a row. I go, okay. Sends me off for the first one. Clobbers the shit out of me. Boom. Hit. Rock my shit. I'm not up for like two seconds. Grabs me. Picks me up. Shoots me off. Hits me again. Bump. Sell. Right back up. There he goes. Not bad, kid. So all of us that did the tryout, we got pointed like some uh, battle royal on the pre-show. And honestly, that was probably the best 15, 30 seconds of my life. Because <laughs> I got out there and I was immediately like, I was immediately like uh, frozen up for a second. I looked out. There's probably close to 5,000 people that we're watching all of this. So all that happens, I get thrown out probably 30 seconds in, go back, and there's like Tommy Dreamer, there's Swoggle, walk by, and there's fucking Jeff Hardy. Because this was... Uh... Sits there, talk for a second, I go, I don't feel too good. And then I threw up right beside him. <laughs> so you threw up next to you threw up next to Jeff Hardy? Everybody's got puke on his shoes. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh so he goes, Are you all right, kid? I go, Yeah, I'll be all right. I'll be all right. 
the man's a sweetheart. He went and got me a bottle of water, and then we just talked, like, just talked and everything like that. And he goes, are you new? I go, that's my very first time being in front of people. He goes, a little nerve-wracking, ain't it? I go, yeah. So then we just talked for – we talked for probably about an hour before he went out and did this match with uh, – what was it? Uh, Kongo Kong? Is that his name? Yeah. Uh, from Impact. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He went and had a – it was a triple threat match. I can't remember the other guy, but I remember it was Jeff Hardy and Kongo Kong. But before all that, uh, we talked for about an hour. And honestly, we talked about everything but wrestling. Because, like, he's really into music with his band and everything like that. And us with the rap and everything like that. We just talked about music. So, if Jeff Hardy ever sees this, Jeff, you owe me a jam session. You promised. <laughs> from, from there... I messaged my dad and I said, hey, remember when I told you that I was going to wrestle and you said you didn't, you really didn't want me to because you didn't want me to get hurt and get all the injuries like you did? He goes, you did it, didn't you? I go, yeah. He goes, all right, so what are you going to do about it? I go, well, I'm going to go to wrestling school. He Talked to Dan McDevitt from MCW Pro Wrestling, and I talked to Dan, Dean, and RJ, uh, signed uh, papers, and then I went to wrestling school the following January. That's awesome, man. So then, yeah. like, what, what keeps you driving into business then? Like, why do you want to keep getting better besides, like, besides, like, one up in your dad? Honestly, man, I'm just having fun. Like... So when I stopped going to MCW after a year, that's when I met up with uh, Sicken and Riot City. That point in time, I wasn't having fun. Like, I was ready to quit, and I was just miserable. Like, I was picking up the stuff, but I, I wasn't feeling comfortable. I wasn't having fun. There's a lot of bullying going on in the business. And I was just like, I'm sick of it, man. Like, when I say, like, I broke down on most days because of that. Like, that's true. Like, I wanted to quit because of it. And then I met Sicken, Grimes, and Dino. Even Matt Wild. And talked to him and everything like that. Uh, they got me to fall in love with the business again. And they taught me, like, no amount of success can compare to having fun. And if you're not having fun, don't wrestle. That's what's driving me. When this is, when this is like, not fun and it's never going to be fun, then I'm done. And so then I'm just happy doing my thing. It's awesome, though. So what do you think is, like, one of the hardest things about being a pro wrestler other than, like, I mean, like, you, you mentioned the bullying part, right? Like, aside from that, like, where else, what else do you think is, like, one of the hardest things about being a, a pro wrestler? The lack of time. Like, I've fallen behind on so much social stuff. Uh, I've missed, I've missed my birthday party twice. Because I had to go wrestle. <laughs> I, I lost an engagement because of wrestling. And this right here, like this pandemic thing was kind of like a blessing in disguise. And I was burnt out. We were on the road every weekend. Before COVID started, we... We were on the road every weekend from the beginning of November until the end of February, every weekend. And it wasn't just like, oh, we're going 40, we're only going like an hour down the road. No, we were doing like eight, nine, 10 hour drives every weekend. And it was just, it was eight, nine, 10 hour drives. They rack up and then on top of, uh, trying to juggle 
Monday through Friday or bookings during the week, trying to have time for your family or a significant other. And just, I felt like I lost myself. But after this all started with the pandemic and everything like that, I was like, I really, I feel very uh, vitalized, revitalized. Mm. Like I have, I feel this like new surge of energy. Like I'm ready, like I'm more than ready to get back. I've tested the waters a little bit coming back, uh, tagging with my new partner, Will Knox with uh, Hood Excellence. And we're ready to go back 2021 stronger than ever now. I feel like, I feel like everybody's ready. To, like for 2021, I feel like everybody's ready to get back and like. Uh, I've ready. already, like, I already uh, scheduled 30 bookings for next year already. Nice. Yeah, uh, right now I'm on track for my biggest year so far. Uh, last year was, I tried to keep track of it, and I stopped counting at 55. So right now the year hasn't started, and as long as nothing else gets canceled, I'll more than likely I'll try to, I'm going to try to get close to 100 bookings this year. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah. So then my, my question for you then after that would be like, what advice would you give to up and coming wrestlers? Have fun. Like if you want to be a pro wrestler, obviously you wanted to do this since you were a kid. That's generally the most, that's generally the most consistent uh, time period is when a person is introduced to wrestling is when they're a child. And they see, like, Shawn Michaels. I was a kid, and I was like, I want to be a pro wrestler. And you love this business. You have fun watching it. And you get into it. The biggest piece of advice that you can I can give you outside of, you know, diet, exercise, run your drills, do the travels, everything like that. The whole cliche, if you work hard, everything will pay off in the end. Yeah, I can get a million dollar contract. Yeah, I could possibly get a million dollar contract, but it's not really going to be. So the biggest piece of advice I can give anybody up and coming, be yourself, have fun. As long as you're having fun, fuck what other people say. I like it. I like it a lot. So, with that being said, though, that is, like, my last of my hard-hitting questions. At least I think they're hard-hitting. But we're going to move into my favorite round, which is the 10-count questions. So, here's how it works. I'm going to fire off a bunch of questions at you. It's whatever first comes to your mind. All right. It's going to be kind of crazy. But put it on the imaginary timer. Bing! And here we go. Smackdown or Raw? Smackdown. Favorite color? Green. Macho Man or Hogan? Neither. Uh, let's go. Favorite anime? Desert Punk. Too hot or too cold? Too hot. Favorite actress? Oh, man. Oh, God damn it. Pass and go back. <laughs> All right. Friday night, what are you doing? Uh, I'm typically working until 5 p.m. After that, I'm coming home and trying to hang out with my family as much as possible now. Uh, favorite podcast? Three count. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Close seconds, Joe Rogan. <laughs> Close second. I'll, you know what? I'll take that. I'll take that. <laughs> Uh, name one person you would like to see on the podcast. Name one person I would like to see on the three count or now entering the ring. Now entering the ring. Now entering the ring. Oh man. Um, probably Moxley. Come on, I think he's, 
<laughs> I think he has a very I think he has one of the most unique stories out there. Yeah, he really does. So go back to favorite actress. I'm just going to think of one. Renee Zellweger. There you go. That works for me. So my favorite question this is the final question of the 10 count questions. My favorite question to ask every single person who comes on here. Favorite curse word. Oh, dude. Fuck is an adjective. <laughs> it's the infinity word. The <laughs> so, or actually I lied. It's bitch ass motherfucker. <laughs> hey man, that works for me too. <laughs> so that is it for the 10 count questions. So where can our viewers and our listeners find you on social media? Uh you can find me on Instagram and Facebook at Eric underscore Ecton underscore H H E. Uh, TikTok is at Eric Ecton. Twitter, I believe, is also at Eric underscore Ecton underscore H H E. That. Well, that's it. That's all of our questions. He gave his shout outs. This is the Three Count Presents Now Entering Ring. And as always, I'm your host, Clifford Red Dog Miller. And like I said, this is now Entering Ring with the humble hoodlum himself, Eric Ecton. So come through next time. Check out our next episode and be there or be somewhere else. No, you will be there because if you're not there, you're going to get humbled by this hoodlum. Yeah. Hey, guys, if you like this video, make sure you subscribe to our channel to get the best content from the three count. We're the best podcast out there. Don't let anyone tell you different. Make sure you follow us on Instagram at 3CountPod as well as on Twitter at 3Count underscore pod.